And then we are going to start. All right, time to start. So welcome to this August Exportia Lab. The topic I've ch chosen for this month is testing several target industries before investing in the European market. I think it's quite, it's simple, makes a lot of sense. It's common sense, but it's something that is often overlooked. And I, I really think um, it's a key uh, piece in uh, European strategy. So let's cover that. So are you confident about your approach about the European market and the direction you're taking your business? For a startup, small, medium-sized business, it's really important to know where you're taking your business. And wouldn't it be amazing to be very confident and to have all the elements that prove that you're heading to the, to the right direction? So in this topic, this is what we are trying to help you uh, build. We're going to try to help you build that confidence that you are indeed um, heading to the right direction by testing in industries. So a bit of background uh, about the business. Some of you already know us, so sorry if it's a repeat track record in building multi-million euros with, with our team uh, across Europe uh, with business and four businesses from around the world. I founded the business in 2006, so 18 years ago. We now have two offices and we've worked with 100 plus companies from around the world. Um, we've got 10 um, team members, sales managers, lead generators, uh, project managers who are where well, we collectively speak nine languages. We work mainly in technical industrial sectors, uh, in green tech, med, medical healthcare, digital platform, advanced manufacturing, um, AI, uh, security, safety, uh, and electronics. I wrote books about the European market. Some of you um, will receive one in the next batch. If you haven't got one, just post your address somewhere to us. We'll send you a copy. And the reason I'm, I'm focusing on this, on this topic today is companies sometimes can spend years uh, in the European maze before they get any re uh, return on their investment in Europe. And for a small, medium size, even a medium sized business, it's quite a big toll on your finances. So really, um, it's important that you don't stay in that maze and that you know where to go. I'll give you an example. One of our um, clients uh, that we worked with them for a very long time, for about 10 years. And initially when they came to us, they actually had tried for about two years to generate sales. They tried different European countries. Uh, they had hired somebody in the UK no sales within two years and they were really it, it really put them in a very bad financial situation so it does have an impact uh if you are heading completely uh off direction and on the wrong track so this is what we are uh, covering today this is our journey ahead so industries are going to be your guide so that's number one we are going to talk about a reality check, doing a reality check on the, those industries in Europe, how to form better strategies and how to do better investments in Europe. And then we're going to, to go through a how-to approach just to summarize everything. Okay, let's use those industries as a guide. First of all, before you choose a target, uh, before you choose a target country, you should first focus on which industries you, you are going to focus on. So which target, which segment of industry you are going to focus on, that's the first thing to know. Then after that, that's how you're going to decide in which European country you are going to go. So the choice of target industries precedes targeting a specific European country. Shouldn't be, okay, we're going to the UK, are we going to Germany? And then we find out what is the industry like there and, and their interest in our product. No, other way around, we start with the industry. 
So you need to be clear on your target industries, as I said. Where do you have the most success? In your domestic market, if you don't, if you haven't been abroad yet, it's fine. Where do you have the most success? Uh, which segment of industry um, do you have the most success? And where do, in which industries do your customer mostly benefit from your solution? And and um, or product. So where do they really see a value add? Are really to pay, ready to pay the price? Uh, I think it's a great way to pick your top industries. Um, and then what you need to, for, to 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 get is really, and what's really important is to have firsthand information and feedback about your solutions. Uh, because they really drive better decisions for your business. So getting first-hand in, uh, information means getting information directly from that industry in Europe. So once you've gone through that thought process, uh, okay, where are, which are my best industries, where I have the most success, where I have the best track record, on a, on a side note, you will. it's very important not to uh, pick an industry where you have no experience when you enter the European market because Europeans are going to ask you, okay, in your home market, do you have references in that sector like us, in, our, in the same sector as us? So sell yourselves time and focus on industries where you already have a tech track record. So you short, you do, you go through that thought process, you select two, three industries, and you really identify well, what are the main issues? How does your solution respond to those issues? And then have a think, are those issues likely to be the same in Europe? Do you, you know, and if you don't know, you don't know, you don't want to do, um, make assumptions, but you can make hypotheses that you, you want to check. So in terms of choosing industries, so I'll give you a few examples of some of the thought process we've been through with our customers. So we have a new uh, client, which is more on the startup phase, and they have very good reference in shipbuilding. And um, we, when we went through the process, we we're like, okay, it's great. The shipbuilding industry is great, but it's quite small. We don't know if they are going to be extremely, it's a very innovative software that this client has. And we were wondering if the shipbuilding industry in Europe would be um, open enough or modernized enough to take it. So we were like, okay, we're definitely going to focus on the shipbuilding industry, but how can we also pick other industries that uh, would have the same type of issues and that we could also target using that reference as shipbuilding um, from the shipbuilding industry. So we discussed with our client and basically what they solve, the problem they're solving for that industry is, is they're helping them predicting the delivery times. And so we we, by discussing with our client, we realized that Really, there are other industries which have very tight delivery time constraint, like a construction. A construction needs to deliver the bridge on time and with no delays, or they, otherwise they have to pay penalties. And then there's also heavy industries that need to ship really big parts that are going to be assembled into a bigger piece of equipment. So same delivery time is critical. So we thought, okay, let's expand those industry selection, look at shipbuilding, construction, heavy industry. And then after that, with that, we really articulated the value proposition for those industries. And then we went and looked in Europe then to do our choice of country. So that's that's really the, the, the process. Another example is a more mature business um, that we worked in the safety with in the safety industry. It's an Australian business. So like many Australian businesses, they work a lot in mining because it's still a predominant industry there. And mining is great as an industry to serve, but in Europe, there's no mining industry. So we had to expand that. And again, you know, this is a safety solution. Compliance 
is important we need, uh, for those companies in the mining industry. But we found that there are other risky industries like construction that face the same type of risk for workers and they have the same importance in terms of safety and protection for, for their workers. So we expanded to construction, which has exactly the same level of compliance requirements as mining. And there were a lot of similarities. So we said, okay, then that's great. We can then identify the countries that have very large construction companies. And um, that, that will help us build a better case. So that's basically how you go about choosing the country is you, first you choose the industry where you, you have the best story to tell and, and you can prove it. You can prove you have good success. And then that's what is going to guide you to choose the right European countries to focus on. Okay, then there's a reality check to do. There is a deep dive that you need to do in that industry. You need to directly uh, talk to the local industry. You know, it's, it's really important to have that deep dive um, this conversation will tell you the level of barrier that you may encounter in that, in that country. So, you know, he, are the competitors really well established, very strong? Um, what's the local, what are the local habits? Are people, you know, in the software industry, for example, to give you an, uh, another example, they would, in some um company in some companies european companies they do develop a lot of internally and that's in certain sectors so they don't want to be sold the software um you know in some um industries you have predominant local players and basically they will not want to deal with any other brands so you have to know that early what that means um by assessing the appetite of the local industry, that's how you are going to have a sense of how long am I, is it going to take me to get the first sales. That's critical for a small business to know that. How long is that going to be a six months process? One year, two years, are, am I going to have to be very persistent or not? And you, this is also how you're going to find out which country is the most responsive. You really want to choose um, a country where you can sell, oops, sorry, where you can sell now, but also that is a good market in the long run. So that's what you you're trying to do by that uh, exercise, by testing the appetite of the local industry. Okay, Conse what are the cons consequences of choosing a target uh, country only by market size. Okay, I've chosen the construction industry. The biggest construction industry is in France and therefore I need to go there, but I haven't tested my market before entering the market. That's not really the right way to go. To go. I'll give you an example. In the lab sector, we had last year two projects, one for from companies from two different countries, and they both were going into the European market. Different companies not competing or anything. And interestingly, um, one of the companies were very determined to just focus on, on, on the German market. And I told them, look, the German market is absolutely the biggest market for you. There's no doubt. This is a big lab, big lab market, but we don't know what the appetite is going to be like. So that means that maybe we, we are, we're going to have blind spots. Maybe there are other countries that are also significant in that sector, maybe not as big as Germany, but we'll have a better appetite for your product and you could get quicker sales. The CEO didn't want to hear about it and, and therefore wanted to be to stay really in that uh, with that focus, Germany, Germany and Germany. We said, okay, we'll do it, but you know, this is this is what we full disclaimer, we would much prefer doing several countries to test, test several countries. 
On the other side, with another customer, same sector, we had we had done a full screening of the different Euro European countries. We picked two markets. We said, okay, it's going to be Germany, but we're going to take also a Switzerland because it's quite a good market in that sector, and we're going to test both. The result was we had very early traction, lots of meetings for them in Switzerland, and Germany was a bit slower to come along. So for us, when we test that appetite, we're trying to, to see where we're going to have sales quicker and where we're going to get interaction you know, uh, quicker because for our clients, the startups, small, medium-sized businesses, so timing is important. We don't want to wait for years before we get the sales. So hence, the reality check is really important. Um, I have saw uh, an, a question from Jacobo. I'm going to get to it. Let me just see. So let before I move on. So hi, Christelle. As an expansion to other region is a topic you mentioned. Um, well, that wasn't a question. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Better Let's go to the next topic. I thought that was a question. Sorry, from LinkedIn. Better strategy. So you've done your choice of industries. You, you know, assessing the, where you have the best track record. You have um, testing tested the appetite of uh, in, of those industries in Europe. Now, how to form? Why is that going to help you form? better strategy. So better entry strategies are achieved by testing hypotheses. We've mentioned one of those hypotheses um, before when we talked about your value proposition to a specific industry that you know well. Well, the first hypothesis that you need to, set, to check when you do the European industries is, you know, do they face the same issues as in my home country? Is that the same? You know, they may have additional constraints you're not aware of. It might create opportunities for you. You don't know. They might have extra compliance requirements, which, which means that your solution will be needed. So there's a lot of, so you can already try to have in mind and write down the hypothesis you need to test. Um, hypothesis, European customer will only buy via channel partners or distributors. Is that right? Is that right or can they buy direct? So it will depend on an industry by industry basis. So that's something to test because at the end of the day, both models exist in different industries, but only your target industry will tell you how they buy your category of product. You know, is do they have a five-year contract with the distributor that is supplying to them a full range of products? And then in that case, you're not going to go around that. You're going to have to partner with that distributor and be on their catalog. Or if it's quite a technical product, sometimes the buyer will want or the technical department of that client will want to deal directly with you. So that's what another hypothesis you can find out. Um, in the public sector, they will always say uh, you can only sell to us via tender. So you have to just respond to tender. Is that really true, though? Aren't there uh, a bit of exceptions? So we found many times, for example, in the government sector, that we can start by uh, going under the tender threshold with little projects. So that's some of the hypotheses you really need to find out whether the, the way in is for you only by talking uh, by, to the end customers can you find out. Okay, better entry strategies are achieved by gathering strategic information at the source. It means you don't want to get biased feedback. Depending, because if you're asking information to a distributor, they may be biased. They may tell you, no, 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 you can't sell direct to that government department. You have to go through me because I'm the distributor, right? So that's a bit of a biased information for you. It's not going to help you get to know your customer. 
Or, and also, of course, government are always going to tell you they buy through tender because that's a normal process and that's what they have to say. And um, but this this is where you need to do a bit more digging and you use this key information to make the right decisions. And those decisions like, you know, which European country should we start with? Uh, how do we articulate? I've tested my value proposition. How do I need to modify it for the European market? Are there other issues that I could solve that I maybe I should emphasize? Um, should I adapt my collateral? Um, you could also test your collateral and say, look, we've highlighted what our solution does. What do you think about that collateral, about that brochure, that flyer? Uh, you can also test um, the minimum uh, viable offer, a package, uh, test the interest, you know, what's the minimum package we can sell, what price point uh, should we fix, uh, what, what is most suitable, you can also test that, what could a trial uh, proof of concept look like, uh, would they, you know, how would they like to try do they want to buy samples at a discounted rate or do they want to have free ones or, you know, that, that they will buy if they're happy? You know, some of those type of things you test. And that helps you make better entry strategy choices. You test, you know, distribution, direct selling, um, small trials and how does that work, which countries you're going to focus on, which one has the biggest appetite. And you need to check what's important with the translation issue, which is really the easiest part of everything in Europe. Translation is easy, you know, it's you can do, get it done professionally. But the truth is, if you know that you're going to France and Switzerland and not Germany and Spain, you know in which language you need to translate your collateral. So it is a better investment right? You allocate your resource where you should be. So it's how you make your decision. So it's a better investment to know your industries that you're going to focus on and testing their appetite and then going into the European market. That means that you're testing the market way before you set up a European ent entity because you, where are you going to set up that, that entity? You don't know yet. Before even hiring a team, Right, you are to going to build up your knowledge about the European country, know where you go, and then you do all those things, not before. In many cases, our customers realize that they actually can sell to Europe without having a local entity. Many, many, many of our customers do so. You can, um, you should invest in the European country where you have proven that you have a, a a market where you have a positive outcome, a positive feedback about your, your solution. And then down the track, once you generate sale, you know you can hire there because it will fuel your sales. So you can definitely um, do a better investment. How to go about it? So let's go step by step. So step one, you pick the industries where you have the best credentials. You articulate your value proposition um, to these maybe one, two, three industries, and you research and find the main European countries where these industries are mostly present. That drives the decision to select the top two countries. So try to be quite thorough in, in your research. And then you need to, to be very clear on the hypothesis you're trying to, to, to test. You know, what business model should I go direct, indirect? What's my pricing like? Um, what is what is the top of mind of that industry? So try to list your what you really need to find out to refine your strategy and have a bulletproof strategy. And then step four, you list the potential target customers that, that you want to, ta to target in those top two countries. And then you contact them and you ask them for feedback about your solution and you um, get some insight about the hypothesis that you're testing. 
you analyze the feedback, you formalize your new strategy on the based on the customer feedback, and you implement your bulletproof new strategy. But I have to say, this is a constant pro process, if I may. You know, this is something where you're going to have a new product, you're going to have to test it, you're going to have to gather feedback. This, as a business and in export, you, you have to do that almost all the time. Okay, let's recap. <clears throat> Sorry, you use your, the, your industries as the guide. Picking the right industries precedes choosing a European country to focus on. Start with the industries first. You do your reality check. It's well and good to choose a very uh, high potential market, but until you check the appetite, you're not going to know how long it's going to take to sell there. So you need to test that. It will help you to formalize better strategies, um, have your hypothesis ready, and um, you can test uh, offers, you can test your channel strategy and, and things that you need to, to check with potential end users. And then that will guide your investment then. You know, you invest where your customer are, whether it's in a trade show. Well, you're not going to do a trade show in the UK if your customers are in Germany, right? So that's everything is gone. Every decision should be guided by that very focused approach on where your industry are, where you focus on. And yes, um, so how to, step one, top industries, top step two, research of industries, where those industries are located in Europe, top two countries, test hypothesis, uh, target list of customers, ask for feedback, analyze, formalize the strategy. So your challenge is to rethink your approach. Today, you may have an approach, you, maybe you are, about to go to the European market, or are you entering a new industry, a new segment, or a new country, even if you're already active in Europe? Rethink your approach. Which industries will you focus on? And which hypotheses do you need to test? That's some of the things you should think about. So doing a, what we call in our jargon, a market validation, this is what we call it, before making strategic decision in Europe will save you time and money. Yeah, it will avoid that to go, you head to the wrong direction and it will increase your chances of success in Europe. And if you have any questions, just get them ready. We have a few minutes. So uh, if there's anyone who has a question for, for me, just feel free. I don't know if Leo, Leo who is a digital marketer, is checking on LinkedIn if we've got any question. And just in the meantime, while people are gathering their thoughts, of course, you can feel free to reach out to me after the session a bit later. Um, so next event. So in September, we're not going to have a lab because we've got a few events coming up. Um, I've been invited by the Fraunhofer Institute, uh, by their cyber hub to do a keynote. So anyone in cyber, uh, contact me because we'll try to, um, we can reach out an invitation. Oh, there is a question. Let me go through that. Is a tender same as a solicitation? So, um, so no, so, uh, there are different processes that are quite frequent. There's first request for proposals. So they will send requests for proposals or they will send um, uh, RFI, request for information. I was looking for that term. So it's not quite the same. Request for proposal, I guess, can be um, formalized as a as a full tender there's a 10 so there's different processes first of all the rfi the gathering different needs and different um potential suppliers and then they will go into the formal process so um i guess you really have to check with the customer and ask them what the process is specifically make sure you are on their list 
Uh, I hope, uh, David, that answer your question. And then when I talk about collateral, um, typically when we start, what we need is a simple flyer. So it's usually a two pager that is easy to send through an email. Companies like to have not just an email, but it's a very short flyer. And that should highlight um, your product. Some of the va your value proposition should be very short. So that's what I mean. At the start, when you start into a new industry, it's usually that. Companies that don't have a flyer, sometimes we get them to do a little deck very short three slide deck it works as well uh, so that's what i mean by marketing collateral um i hope i could respond to that um <clears throat> all right so um I think that's it for today if we don't have any questions from linkedin so september no export your lab uh, and we have that the keynote. And if you're in cybersecurity, can't reach out to me and we'll um, invite you if you want to, to come along. Uh, InnoTrans uh, in Berlin, so that's a railway trade show. Meet us there. So we'll be there uh, with the team and with, um, with some clients. And October 2024, we'll have our next Export Year Lab. Uh, so the topic to be determined <laughs> and so we will definitely see you there feel free to reach out as usual I hope you enjoy this August Export Your Lab and I will see you very soon thank you for attending uh, we're always very um, honored to um, to share uh, what we're doing at Export Your and so I hope to see you all soon again very soon Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye.